So looking at what we're given and what we want, I noticed two things to begin with. First, both micrometers and inches are both units of length. Secondly, I noticed that micrometers is metric and inches is in the standard or English system. So that's going to help me figure out what conversion factors I should use. All right, so let's look at writing down what we're given. Okay, so after I write down what value is given and what unit we're trying to get to, then I work on figuring out what my conversion factors are going to be. And again, I am going to look at my textbook for some help. Now, I notice here micro, which is the prefix and the given value. So I'm just going to go ahead and write a conversion factor between micrometers and meters. Okay, so one micrometer is equal to. When we are writing our prefixed units conversion factors, we always start off with one of the prefixed unit. And then on the other side, we basically translate. So I have one here. I'm going to write one on the other side. Micro, according to the textbook, here's micro, it means 10 to the minus 6. So times 10 to the minus 6. And then I have meter, and on this side I must have meter. So all three parts must be on both sides. We have a 1 on both sides. Here we have the prefix, and on the opposite side we have the power of 10 represented by that prefix, and both sides have our base unit. Now what this does is I now have two micrometers. Remember, I want to do my double, micro, my double unit check. So I have micrometer and micrometer. I don't need any other conversion factors with micrometer. But I look at the units that I don't have two of. I have inches and I have meters. So I'm going to go back to um, go back to page um, page 24 and it's it's not quite in this um, you can't really see it you can just see part of it here but at the bottom of page 24 is table 2.3 and what this table is is it gives us conversion factors between metric and English and you really need to have these um, easily accessible, especially when you go to take the quiz. Now I look here, and if you look on your in your textbook, I see that I actually have a conversion factor between meters and inches. And looking back at my question, that's what I need. I need a conversion factor between inches and meters. These are the two units that I don't have um, double up. So I'm going to write down this conversion factor. And again, you can't um, see it completely, but if you look in your textbook you'll be able to see it. And it is 1 meter is equal to 39.37 inches. Okay, now I'm going to do my double unit check. And once I have two of every unit, after I've written out my given my one and my conversion factors, then I'm ready to do my dimensional analysis, my railroad math. So I have inches here, and I have inches here. I have meter here, and I have meter here. I ha every single unit, I have two up. And that means I'm ready to do my math. So let's go back to the page where the problem is. And let me get started on my railroad math. 
since I have two conversion factors, I'm going to have two vertical lines. So here's, I, here's my horizontal line. I think I called that vertical in my previous explanation. But this horizontal line we know is the fraction bar. And we always begin with what we're given. And since I've clearly written this up here, that's an easy thing to do, 2.13 micrometers. Now this unit here is going to determine the order of um, which half of the conversion factor goes in the denominator, which goes in the numerator. I have micrometer here, that means I want micrometer down here. This is the only conversion factor that has micrometer. So one micrometer on the bottom, and then the other part, the other half of it, goes on the top. So micrometer, and this G here stands for given, micrometer divided by micrometer is one, so that cancels out. Now meter is not what I want, so I need to keep on going. If I have meter here, I need meter down here. I'm going to go ahead and cross out this conversion factor because I've already used it. So here's my other conversion factor, one meter, and then the other half goes on the top. Now I have to say there's often confusion about the number that goes in the denominator. It is not necessarily one. In this particular problem, the numbers are one. But it is not the number that determines which side goes in the denominator. It is the unit. So in this case, we have micrometer here and micrometer here. The number with micrometer is 1, so 1 goes down here. I have meter up here. Meter must go down here. And my next conversion factor, 1, is associated with that meter. So it stays with it. But it is often, often thought that 1 always goes in the denominator, and that is absolutely not the case. Don't fall into that trap. You use your units to tell you um, which goes, which half of your conversion factor goes in the denominator and which half goes in the numerator, and whatever number is with a particular unit stays with it. All right, so now let's look at figuring out the answer. My final unit is going to be inches, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply all three values in my numerator, 2.13, 1 times 10 to the minus 6, and then 39.37. And I'm going to use my calculator to do that. And 2.13 times 1 times 10 to the minus 6 times 39.37. OK, and I get 8.3 nine and I'm actually rounding this if you do this in your calculator you'll see that the um, I'll actually put it below here let me just put below what my calculator tells me this is what my calculator tells me okay so I don't want to express my value with these leading zeros. They're not significant. And so I'm going to move my decimal point one, two, three, four, five times. So my power of 10 is going to be negative 5 because this value, oh, look how I spelled calculator. So sorry about that. I'll just abbreviate it, <laughs> calculator. Because this value is less than 1, my exponent is negative. And um, I'm given three sig figs to begin with. So that's how many sig figs I want to express my um, answer. So here's my last significant figure. I look to the right of it. There's a 5 there. So this 8 is going to go up by 1. So my final correct answer is going to be 8.39 times 10 to the minus 5th inches. And that makes sense because micrometers are really, really tiny. Um, and so I should end up having a small number. Now, I didn't do the math from the denominator. 1 times 1 would be 1. 
And if I divide it 1 into this number, it's still going to be the same. So if we have numbers other than 1 in our denominator, which is often the case, we'll have to divide, we'll have to multiply these down here and then divide it into our, our numerator to get our final answer.